Hello. In a previous tutorial, I showed how to control a string property in a view model in the JavaScript runtime. Today, I thought I'd expand on that tutorial and show you how to control a number property, string as well, boolean, trigger, color, and enums. So first of all, let me show you what this file looks like. This number up here is obviously controlled by this number. The string is a straight up just string. The boolean, however, has its own state machine layer with a couple of timelines. And when we change the boolean, all it does is affect the weight of the font. Next up, we have the trigger, which also has its own animations. And when we fire the trigger, it fires this bouncing animation. Next, we have the color property. That's just bound with data. And then finally, we have three enums. Now, these enums control these transitions. And within each of these timelines, it's pretty simple. It just says enum1, enum2, and enum3. So now all I have to do is make sure that I have export instance checked on and go up here and tap export and export for runtime. Over here, it shows you all of the supported platforms. However, we're just going to be using the WebJS runtime. And to do this, all you need to do is just say export your rive file. Then you can save that .riv file in a folder. And then in that same folder, create an HTML file called index.html and simply paste in the code that I will provide. So save. And here is the HTML that I will provide. All you need to do is copy and paste this code into VS Code, which is the IDE that I'm using. And over on the right, you'll see I'm using a free VS Code extension called Live Preview. Now, let me explain a couple of things that are going on in this code. The most important thing to know is that we have an object called R. This is our Rive object. And in here, we have our file name. It's very important. You need to make sure that this is exactly the same as this. Additionally, you need to make sure that your artboard is exactly the same name as your artboard in your Rive file, and the same with your state machine. All of my details are correct, which is why I can see my Rive file displayed here. Now, the first thing I need to do is turn data binding on. So I'm going to make a new line underneath autoplay and type in auto bind with a capital B, colon, true, comma. We have now activated data binding. But before we can control any of these properties, we need to first retrieve our view model instance from our Rive object. How do we do this? Well, just go down here to onload and create a new line. And what I'm going to do now is create a variable. The correct way to create a variable in JavaScript is to use either const or let before you declare the variable name. But what is the difference? Well, a variable declared using const is a variable that can never change. You can almost say that its value will remain constant. On the other hand, let allows you to change the variable's value throughout the script. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm trying to keep it quite simple, and I'm just going to use let for everything just for flexibility. So I'm going to say let vmi, and that stands for view model instance. Now, I could have called this variable anything. I could literally call it, you know, that and say equals. But just for clarity, I'm just going to keep it simple and say vmi. So now that I've declared a new variable, I'm now going to give it a property. I'm going to type in r dot view model with a capital M instance with a capital I. So what does this line of code mean? Well, if you remember, r is our Rive object. You can see there it's called R. And within our Rive object is that view model instance that we exported earlier. So what I'm doing when I type r.viewmodel instance is I am reaching into our Rive object and I am retrieving the view model instance contained within. I am then loading this view model instance into the variable vmi. And now that I've done this, I can actually control any properties contained within our view model instance. So let me show you an example. I can now type in vmi.number because this is the property type that we are aiming to control, and then brackets, apostrophes, 
and now we type in the name of our number property. In my rive file, my number property was called num. I'll just type in num, and then I'll set the value to be whatever I want. It's as simple as that. Now let's control the string property. It's much the same, vmi.string, and then the name of your string property, mine was str, and I'll control the value equals, and then of course you have to control it with a string, so apostrophes, and I can set its value to be whatever I want. You can see that updated over here. Next up is the Boolean property. And to control this, I'm first going to create a very simple function that turns this true and then false once every second. On a new line, create a function, and I'm going to call this function toggle bool brackets. Then you need to create some curly brackets and create a new line. It's in here that we're going to say exactly what the function does. The first thing I need to create in this function is a brand new variable. Let, I'll just call it current value. And of course, I'm going to set the current value variable to be the current value of the boolean, which I've called bool. And then at the end, just type in value. So what am I doing on this line? I'm taking the current value of the boolean and then loading it into the variable called current value. Now on a new line, I can set the value of the boolean to be not current value, meaning the opposite of the variable current value. So in the simplest terms possible, what this function does is it finds out whether or not the bool is true or false, it loads that value into this variable, and then one line later, it changes that value to the opposite of what it just was. Now on a new line, I'm going to use a JavaScript function called set interval, and then inside the brackets, I'm going to call this function. So I just type in toggle bool, and now over here you can see that the boolean is being set true false true false true false because I haven't actually set an interval. If you just type in comma 1000, that is an interval of 1000 milliseconds, one second. So every second this boolean is being set to true, and then one second later being set to false. Now I'm going to do something similar with the trigger. I'm going to fire the trigger once every second. So to do this, let's set up another function. I'll call it trig, curly brackets, new line, and all I'm going to type in here is vmi.trigger, and then the name of my trigger in Rive. And then at the end, instead of typing in value, we just type in trigger brackets. Now when I call this function, it's simply going to fire the trigger. Let's call the function. Let's do set interval, trig, and then type in 1000. So now every thousand milliseconds, we are calling this function. Now let's control this color property. So new line, VMI, color, and I called it COL in Rive. And at the end, instead of dot value, we type in dot RGB brackets. And now we need to type in three numbers. So my first number is 255, comma, zero, comma, zero. This sets the color, as you can see, to a bright red. And finally, I'm going to show you how to control enums. So new line, VMI, enum, the name inside Rive was just enum, dot value equals, and now we need to set its value to a string. But what is the specific string that we need to set it to? Well, just go back into Rive, and up here in your enum, you will have set all of your options. I just called mine option one, option two, and option three. So if I type in option one, it still says enum one, because that was the default. But if I change it to option two, enum two, and then option three, enum three. This was a very simple overview of how to control view model properties in the JavaScript runtime.